Hi guys, Kyle. Sarah. Here with our live stream workshop on Wednesday, the 27th of May. This is our first live in our brand new space that isn't finished yet, but it's got floor, it's got lights, we got a camera, <laughs> so we're going. We're gonna deal with it. Hope That's everybody's okay. doing well. I can imagine that you are starting to get full in the brain oh. if you are training online. If you guys have been with us the last few weeks, uh, you'll notice that um, our actual space that we use ended like right here before. So we've been able to expand our space out so we have a little bit more room to kind of navigate through. Uh, for our movement, uh, especially as we started getting released from uh, from quarantine, uh, mm -hmm. people are going to start dancing a little bit more. Uh, now we have more room for our pattern structure. Yes, we've been working footwork in tighter spaces, especially those of us that have been stuck at home uh, in our kitchens. Uh, you have had to narrow your movements down, so now it's a lot better getting that ability to uh, open up and move now uh, is going to be our next step. Um, something that we are going to be covering today, just briefly, is... You're gonna hear that. That's our. Uh, that. yeah. <laughs> oh, we're getting. Uh, you like that? That is our trash man. Trash man. He'll be gone. In He's still seconds. working, and our sound board comes in tomorrow. So, <laughs> welcome to COVID. How yeah. it works, right? Um. Oh my gosh, we needed that because now I've got. Um, Guys, this where we're standing was to like the ceiling with um other people's stuff. Our life, like no, my uncle, Carter's dad your dad, my cousin, and my other uncle, five people's stuff that we had to go through and all of ours. So needless to say, we're very proud that we're standing here right now. Yeah, the, the last two weeks have been uh, me just Took many so... nights and many bottles of wine to get this place <laughs> <Yeah. out. Okay. laughs> Thank you, Root Cellars, for that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so where are we going today? All right, so followers, um, I want to touch on the free arm. I talk about this a lot in my workshops. You're going to hear me continue to talk about it because I think as the dance shifts and grows, um, the free arm needs to be revisited quite a bit and on both sides. But if you look at back, maybe um, pre-2000, um, the dance would be moving a lot faster. And so you would find that we wouldn't get a lot of right to left hand holds, not that we wouldn't get them at all, because we would, we would get roll in, roll out, there was still pattern work with that, but I would say there was a lot, lot less. And so what happened was the followers free arm many times just became a styling point. So you would see many times that free arm either just prepping or when it had a moment to relax, it would free it would free and shape and so i remember in the 90s really working on constantly training when i was first starting out on how you know what do i do with my arms and then progressively as time has gone on and we started using more of that side of the body i have found that that is so much more of a following tool and a shaping tool yes. than it is a styling point and it I, also shows me options when a follower uses that in their space i can as a leader uh, see opportunity when i see that there's an arm available to me right so followers, something i'm going to do is i'm going to walk through just a couple things i do to work on this It'd be great to do, and even if you're at home right now with somebody who isn't a, a dancer, um, it would be good to kind of see if they can project and copy you and your shaping of where you're wanting to put your free arms. Um, but more importantly, we're gonna put it into an example today for you, but also followers, I want you to know why we're using this, yeah? Uh, leaders, um, I've been wanting to work on Sarah's free arms forever. So I'm so glad we're touching that today. How are um, these free arms? <laughs> so what I want to do uh, for me leaders uh, is instead of just having the set arm, I feel like uh, leaders aren't busy enough with getting hands uh, or uh, when they do the movements are too abrupt and they don't ask uh, the right way at the right time. Um, so if we can uh, work on figuring out how to get response out of an arm from a follower. So I know a lot of times as we do these things, we take this as a projection for leading and sometimes it can come out of nowhere. So you're like, oh, I remember that pattern and you do something. Uh, the idea is to let the arm shaping work similar to the way that we work our basics out. Um, when we talk about basic movement or basic pattern development, uh, where you will line up in front of your follower can dictate what your next pattern is gonna be. So if I'm standing directly in front of my follower, this tells me all the patterns of like tuck, turn, and sugar pushes. 
Um, and then when I, when I turn off to the right side or show the right side of my body open, this shows my follower ability to do, um, to do like underarm turns, uh, anything that's going to my right side, yes? And when I jump to the other side, then my follower can now see that there's projection here. Well, the same way that we do that within our placement of our body in there, we also do the same way with our elevation or de-elevation of our hands and our arms in the connection. So we've got to make sure that we're pre-leading, but following the flow of our arm structure where it's gone from. A lot of times what will happen, let's just do this in a generic fashion, people will do a simple sugar push, they'll get done with that sugar push, this will retract, and then they'll think, oh, there's my next pattern. Hi, and so can the, you go to overhead really quick? So the movement will happen like last second. So what I want from you right now is not to take the concept and go three and four, five, and oh, that pattern, I've got to get that hand now. The idea is as this hand retracts or it's coming back, it can help develop in position what it is you want to happen in the connection. So followers, I will watch, see there, my guy, sorry. I will watch the development of my leader's free arm so that I can start to take the shape of the pattern that could be coming next. And so, this started to really help me <clears throat> as West Coast Swing, the one thing I, not the one thing, there's not one thing I love about this dance. Not one thing. Uh, there's everything. Oh, okay. um, but something that I think is really, really cool is that it's constantly developing. It's a developing dance, and I think it always will be, which is so inspiring and exciting, makes me want to never leave. Um, and so I will watch where my leader's developing because so many times they're making stylistic choice choices, not just technical choices. And so you'll find that, especially when I see a leader go from a default retraction of the free arm, and I start to see them use their body to set the free arm. So the difference of you doing this with your arm, but initiating the setup in your body. And if you watch Kyle, as he started to ask up above, he first took it up above by raising, not up and down this way, but by raising space to be able to have motion to lift his arm, yeah? Yeah, a lot of times um, you'll see the uh, movement that just stems from the limb doesn't have much life to it, but if you can let the, the movement start from your core, uh, I think it tells and telegraphs the action, whether it's gonna go up in my body, to the side, behind me, no matter what, there's a development in the core that your follower can kind of jump on board with and see the shape before the shape happens. It's almost the pre-lead. The same way uh, followers can see that it's gonna be an underarm turn before you do an underarm turn. You don't just go, hey, it's a sugar push, and as you go into an underarm turn, you don't just go, hey, it's underarm turn. The development of lifting your body during the anchor step starts to develop and lift up inside yourself. That core development starts to raise up so you can start to project to the follower something's going to go over their head. Same thing has to happen with your, with your arm shapes and your development that way, yes? So if we can, let's just set up, um, let's just set this up for an underarm turn first. So you can kind of get the development within the rib cage projecting to an underarm turn for a follower. So sugar push first, one and a two. Three and stop four. Now, whether you anchor in place, float your anchor, whatever, I don't care at this point. That's for a whole different lesson. Today is just developing projection over the head right now. So during your anchor step, whether you're, you're posted or floating, let it rise up in your body. And when I do this, leaders, I want you to take your right hand right now and make a fist and put it right in your core, okay? Uh, your solar plexus, yeah? So I don't want to be below my belly button, but I don't want to be up in my rib cage too much. I want to be kind of below that space. You'll feel there's a little break in your rib cage here. Set your hand there, all right? Now, as you start to anchor, I want you to raise your fist up a little bit above that, that core place that you started at, ready? And anchor, let it come up. Now, as you do that, there is a slight elevation change in your shoulders and your elbows, but what I don't want you guys to do, I don't want you to take this and lift and draw it up physically. I want you to almost think that you're doing it uh, almost like breathing in. So if you took your right hand and you put it against your body here and you just took a deep breath in, you'll feel that it almost draws up against your, your body. So if you can, let that be just a, a small amount so of energy that draws up. Shrug. It doesn't end up being in the shoulders where you shrug them up and say, hey, we're gonna do something over the head. That's not what it needs to be. It just needs to be an elevation in ribs because this hand has to start bringing this up with my core. So would you say it's very similar to like, if I was like breathing down this exercise with the arm and as I start to breathe up, 
how I'll still engage my lats and my shoulders, but I allow that lift through my rib cage that relieves it, right? I never do that, but I'm sure it feels just <laughs> so like it's that. That's a crazy exercise that many of us need. So yeah, so tough. in the mornings, I don't get up and... <sighs> don't worry, guys. This wall right here is going to be a whole new situation. What are you so about that? Because actually... I disappear, but no, it doesn't. Oh, okay. our logo. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to show you guys May 30th theater. Yeah, actually, we'll post our new logo. Yeah, it's uh, it's like we're finishing the last little touches on it. It's pretty badass. Um, okay, so we've got our development of lift in our body versus drop in our body. So we've got to be able to project within that core structure where something is coming from rather than just having the limb move. We've got to get the core to move first, and the core will tell the limb where it's going. The, the core will tell the limb where it's going. The core will tell the limb where it's going. Thank you. I thought I got an audience here. I'm glad you finally learned. All right. So leaders, our job once again is use development within the core to project an arm that you want. Yes? So hi Joelle, we miss you. Oh, that is sweet. Oh, oh. Reg, well, we love you guys. And uh, oh we can't wait to come back to France. Oh my god, I miss that place. Alright, so let's do this again. So let's do a sugar push and let's do that development up on our core structure a little bit to tell our colleagues gonna be an underarm turn. Go. Sugar. Two, three. Four, five, develop, up, oh, one, two, three, four, stop right there. You don't want to be stuck up here. So you got to allow that to drop back down when you're ready to go back into your next pattern structure, unless it's going to go back over the head. Um, followers, something for us to practice on our own with this. Um, I think many times when we're running our West Coast swing on our own, we don't envision pattern structure. And this is something that you mean I, followers? Yeah. And it's something that I do because I choreograph. So when I hear a song many times, you're picturing the leading. You're picturing the leading. Yeah, when the I the leading coming to you and then what you totally. have to do. Totally. I had this conversation with Tatiana one time. Um, what's cool when your best friend does what you do, you're able to like talk about things that really um, I don't know that unless somebody else did this dance, they would understand, right? And so for me, when, because I'm a choreographer and because I think of performing that and delivering that, even as a follower, when I start to listen to a song, I picture us dancing and what your lead is doing and what that lead would be to create that. And so... Do you feel like a lot of dancers may do the opposite where they may personalize the uh, the movement right? and not because picture what do you being think? led? What do you think when you listen? To a song? To a song. I think of producing pattern structure for my follow and the and the choreography that I think would fit relative to what I'm hearing. Yeah. So it's production based. Totally. And I think as followers, when we're just practicing West Coast swing in its basic form, we don't necessarily project base, even basic pattern work in our body. Even though I may say sugar push, they'll practice this way. And if I say underarm turn, they'll practice this way. But if I was doing a sugar push and underarm turn with you, the cadence and where, and I would pull lower in my body, and as it starts to go into the underarm turn, I would project up into my rib cage, and if then it was going to go into an inside roll, I would keep it up into my rib cage, and then if it was going to drop lower, I would then go into a whip, and I process that pattern work, and moving through that pattern work through my upper body just as much as my body. So would you say that even when you're when you're working on you're dancing, mm -hmm. you do that inside of the idea of production. Totally. I think it's fun, right? It's fun to like put the, the, dance we're doing. put the piece of the puzzle together. Yeah. And I think uh, one of the things that I use a lot of times, or we use a lot of times in our, in our teaching, is the correlation to um, line dancing. When you're given a structure of, uh, a structure of movement, uh, you, can, you can learn that structure of movement and the flow and the process and the, the wall in which you're facing and the order of dance stuff, but then at one point it has to become musical. So you have to turn off the supposed to moments and you have to allow the structure to still have its integrity, but learn where the, the moldable pieces are. So if I was gonna take something as simple as like, let's say an electric slide, uh, which when I learned it, it was a grapevine first, right? You, so, you didn't learn the like, get up, get up, get up. Class. No, no, the grapevine was- well, I learned the giddy up. So it was, it was a grapevine first, right? Don't learn the giddy up. So once we got the grapevine down, I was like, well, it's just one, two, three, and then tap, right? So in the concept of one, three, three, tap, I was like, okay, well, what can I do in this time? And that's where Sarah said, she got the one, two, three, tap, or, cl or clap. Uh, the next one was like the turn down line concept. It was like, we turn down line, clap. So no matter what, we had all these options 
to at least fulfill the integrity, the integrity or the structure of the basic, the grapevine, within the same amount of time that we were given. So as soon as we were able to see what those two elements were, we could alter them just a little bit to make our musicality stand out a little bit more. This is why solo work works. Is because and line dancing is so such a good great. way. I love all these new programs that people are doing. Um, how um, there are a lot of professionals, including Kyle and I, like we started in line. Uh, working on our own dancing individually and being able to freestyle is super important. We have a question. Yes, oh, uh, Jerry. Oh, our number one guy. Hi. All right. So um, drop, uh, uh, drop happens during the anchor. Oh, uh, of the, okay. So I think, and this is really good. I'm glad we kind of like got this question because uh, I do feel like it was such a vague option in here, guys. This is one of our toolbox concepts uh, that we want in our, we have in our, uh, our online content. Uh, the idea is that the projection of your next pattern uh, or what's happening in here should dictate what's going next. So watch, let's dance without that going on first, I right? Can't. Come on, baby. It's impossible. I, it's, it's so just straight just leading. Just straight, but still dancing, but then giving them, right, waiting to project that until the last minute of what's going to be. Give me something else yep right i can follow it there's nothing there's nothing that's catching me off guard but there's definitely no room to create there's no room for input there's no room for me as a follower to talk and dance with you in these maybe there's room in moments but there could be so much more well and because we don't um and this is probably going to cross a couple of concepts in one area but first of all, my movement of my hands is not like block print writing. These aren't just things to do. To me, they're cursive writing. And even when I write in cursive, my letters may look really similar as I do something, but I never let my pen come off of the paper until I'm done with the word. So in a way, the feeling of the stroke moving into something is gonna dictate how I have to finish the action so that it creates a certain look and flow of my movement. Wow, nice. So if you can imagine when you're dancing here, if you're just thinking of the block print concepts, the opportunities that you're gonna miss out on are immense. Uh, one of the things that I like to see is that if something is driving up, and this is, and once, as Sarah moves away from me, as Sarah draws back, relative to the longest part of the connected limb is up here. So that's not just gonna stay down here on Sarah's plane. As she gets further away, relative to the, to the point of contact in my body, that's gonna rise up. So as I allow the shift of movement away from me to align, that shift of lift coming up inside the partnership connection is something I can add to. So once I've got that option of draw up in this, my options for movement now open up because I'm not stuck to direction. I'm managing arcs and then the redirection, I can add more arc. I can take and arc can out of this. And you can do that in a slotted format. Right, so this arc, as she's going away from me, I feel naturally drawing more up in my body. That might project to me that a pattern over the head is available to my follower. Now, as I do that and it goes out, and maybe that arc starts to push over to the side a little bit, that might start something that kind of narrows the slot line in for maybe a, a mirrored action. So depending on where you're, you're following your arc will determine the choice of pattern that you do next. Now, last one. Uh, Kyla, can you give me an overhead view for a second? So as we do this, so that tracking action we've been doing on this linear, but then within the vertical lift of this, there's also tracking that can push out and into the partnership. So things like maybe I start aligning myself in the slot differently, and then my follower goes back, that arc now becomes this way. You can see Sarah's body needs to be tracked differently, and then the push out for connection and prep is gonna follow a different line, go flip back, so your goal in this is to find, if you're gonna make this almost like a, a sphere in this area, you can arc anywhere inside the sphere that you want to, and it can go anywhere as it follows that line coming out. So if the arc is going this direction, it's gonna feel like it can come back this way. If it's going this direction, it can feel like it can come back this direction. If it's going this way, it comes back down, it can feel like it can go this direction. So following that arc is super important, and it becomes um, the thing that I use to find patterns. And followers, when I wanna put input into a moment, I try to catch Instead of the end result, I try to catch the corner or an edge of that arc 
to alter a counterbalance in some way, whether it be down below or up above, to let that leader know, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pressing against this arc, do you wanna use it? And a big way I do that is having the accessibility of my upper body and connecting in all directions, not just forward and back. Yeah, that linear response to connection has so much more when we take it out of the two dimensions of, of, of video. So something that we want to ask of you this week to focus on is followers. I want you to choreograph, and it doesn't have to be complicated patterns. It could simply be like if I was to choreograph something right now for myself to work on. Um, part of the thing I'm working on, it's been really interesting watching all the old videos of myself. A whole bag of emotions. Robert and I were just talking this morning about like what this does to us um, going through that whole time period and how emotional it is. And, it, and probably the biggest word we feel at the end of it is gratitude and, and um, glad we made it is <laughs> still here, you know, and it's pretty, it's quite a ride. And something that I saw in my dancing that I really craved to get back is I really liked how I powered my feet through the counterbalance of my upper body a lot more back then. And I wanna, I wanna implement it. I think it'll make me feel a lot more stronger. So this is what I would work on right now because of that. You may have another issue and you can tailor fit your workout program to be what you want. So followers, if I was to do that right now, you're gonna see me really keep not a lot of upper body movement. You're gonna see me wanna keep that chest forward. I would go into an underarm turn. Let's now do a hand change. We're gonna go into an inside roll. I'm gonna do lay. He's gonna come down this side and then I'm gonna do another front with the hook and out. And so then I would repeat that for myself. I go, okay, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna go into a sugar push, right? I'm gonna go into an underarm turn. Now I need to project that underarm turn, keep it up above, understand the timing of finishing out my rotation, that arc. I'm gonna prep forward with my hips, free spin out, offer this left side out, control my rotation to now delay, hook, make up space where my leader would have projected me to go. There's an example of a mindset of me just taking a second to work on something. And you can do this too. You can also just go to our membership website and have these little choreos done for you. Mm -hmm. But till then, practice that this week. Followers, leaders, here's your focus. Um, so leaders, we've talked about now letting the arc kind of direct what's happening. We've talked about the core developing the action, like projecting and then stemming from that space now. So when I go to ask for something, my follower can see the movement flow from my core, hey, I need that hand over there. Rather than just elevating from the joint and asking, the follower is gonna see the projection of my core sending it to my arm. So if you can imagine that there's a, a ball of energy and that ball of energy has to navigate from your core up your, stern, up your sternum and then out across your chest and down your arm to get to your follower. So as long as there's a place to start the visual of this, um, the follower can find the action. So this is just as simple as asking for a sugar bush. So if I'm gonna ask a hand in a sugar bush, I'm not gonna start the sugar bush and go think one, think two. I'm gonna develop back Here's my one and a two as my follower sees that development through my body to pick up the hand so I can then receive yes. it. Now, when I do this, I don't do it within the concept, baby, can I borrow you for a second? With her wanting to yes. stop, my follower wanting to stop, unless I want my follower to stop. But ultimately, when our basic shirt push concept, when I go to get the hand and I go to ask for this, um, that development doesn't go to an end point. It goes and asks, but then as it starts to come towards me, it's, it's jumping on board. One of our tools that we use that's huge from, uh, from really low level actions to um, some of the most complex pattern structures that we have um, is something called uh, Hobo on a Train. Um, we're not going to do a full explanation on it, but the concept is I've got to jump on board with where it's already moving to. And if I jump ahead and Sarah gives me that hand, now I've got, now I've got a, a, an action or a person moving towards me while I've got a hand stabilized. I've got to make sure that, that my hand goes with my follower's hand to bring them into place before I give them the ability it's to push on something. fine line there, be very careful. This, I would say. So as you develop and you get the hand, remember you're trying to get the follower to still reach for you. And if you are working with somebody right now, do just a, a, an experiment for me. Um, ask that person standing next to you to shake hands. Hey, how's it going? I am, fill in the blank. Slim Shady. 
So as you do that ask, hold on just one second, let me finish my idea. So as we go to ask for that hand, the response between the two people now is one has to initiate and the other has to follow through. So once initiated and asked leaders, don't stop that action, do the initiation and ask, but then as you do that, wait for the follower to continue to reach forward to get your hand. Because it's one thing that's a little bit different about this, is that the look of someone who gives you the hand versus someone who's chasing a hand has a whole different concept. I love how Robert just put that's right. What's good swing is a series of arcs. It is. It absolutely is. And Roger Chin just was talking about, so this is opening doors, creating more opportunity yes. for choices in the moment. Totally. So that you're not like just making a decision right away, that you're actually learning to read each other so that cool things can happen on the fly. Um, so I've been doing a lot of like artwork with uh, between our website oh, and our new logo. Yes. And uh, one of the cool things that you look at is, well, I've got this line here, and then I've got this one here. How do I make these two merge with, without, without making so them become just drawn and fragmented? And <laughs> I'd have to say that making sure that you create arcs and lines and movement into things so they don't become too right angle oriented unless that's the look you're going for should be the base structure you start with to me finding those arcs and then movements are so much so important so, so this is what happens though i know a lot of people who are like classic west coast swing like theorists they feel that the arcing of the dance sometimes bastardizes the character of the dance because it is slotted and this is the thing. The West partnership Coast is swing, slotted. Yeah, the partnership is slotted. It's not slotted on the floor. So check this out. Something that we found that really freed the dance for us. <laughs> and again, this is just so many things. But one, one of the earlier things that freed the dance for us, and I, and I feel like we developed it together, but I'm sure somebody installed that seed well before. I'm not some just brilliance that came out of my mind. It's crazy how many times seeds were planted, right, in our minds, and then we just develop and we think we made it up um but what i learned is we learned is that the slot isn't on the ground we took the slot off the ground and we put it between each other and then that slot became less oh, of a more. straight line that if you fell off of you would go straight to hell it became more of the width of the partnership there's a polarization of energy yeah and we're we're north and south at this point if we just want to give it a, a direction and that north and south can flex a little bit you can kind of move. Uh, Tyler, can you go over the head for just a second? Especially when you're talking about the width of the partnership being the right. slot, right? So we're going to have arcs in our own body. So I think where sometimes people feel like they, they're missing that character of West Coast Swing is when the dance entire time becomes circular in the slot motion. The slot becomes a, not a slot. It, it becomes spokes. a circle. It spokes. And so and that's the negative. What's, now that's, so what you see, that's a cool variation if you want to vary. It doesn't mean you can't do that. And the things are arcing. So say Sarah's following this direction within, within her anchor structure, and I'm following this direction over here. It doesn't mean that we can't be off of our projected slot line for just a second, but the polarization of energy should draw us back into our alignment. And that's what we mean by taking the slot off the ground. Go ahead and flip it back around. And maybe. I think a lot of times, um, one of my like goals, there was this woman named Betty Corbis. She was out of San Francisco and she's a staple in this community. She was a part of bringing the young and the gener and the old together. When Kyle and I and a lot of, of your other top champions right now were young, she would seek us out and she was friends with all the masters and the, like, the champions of the generations before us. And she would be like, look, I'm going to take you to this club where there's a bunch of old-time swing dancers. And they don't like the way you dance. They think you're not doing the dance. And they're going to tell you that. And you need to listen. And you need to take it because it's their dance first. And she taught me to not take that personal. And she goes, and you know what? When they were kids, people were telling them the same thing. The difference is, don't you be the generation that doesn't listen. And so that was such a cool thing. But at the same time, she was going to all her friends going, look, these kids aren't going to want to hear what you have to say if you're not encouraging and open to their new ways. And she was such a mentor to me. And I'm like, ooh, someday when I'm a grandma, I'm going to be so cool like her. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep that fresh. And so I want to work on always translating what I know from like, the, the classic generation that built the dance to the new one and say, hey, you know, the arcs are rad. I love them. And this is how the dance is arcing. They, the new kids are trying to keep it in a slot. 
I hope this transfers a little bit that you can understand there's arcs in the middle of that. And that's where you see people who are passionate when experience with the dance push that a little far. And they've got to to push the dance. Um, I use this analogy. I don't know if it's exactly right, but I'm going to say it. If somebody can help me out and send me a private message that it's not right. But I don't think uh, there's no right angles in nature. Um, there, There's angles in nature, but there's really no, no right angles in nature. Everything kind of curves and rounds off. Um, so to me, um, everything's bubble oriented. Um, why is the soap bubble round? Uh, the concept uh, is because uh, it's the most energy efficient uh, object. Um, so one of the things that we kind of live inside of is instead of making these hard choices and movements, is giving those softening edges uh, some flow so that when you decide to catch something with a hard edge, it has purpose to it. Uh, instead of being built into your basic structure, your, uh, your flow is one part of the arcing action, and the speed and development of power that you create in that will create the, um, the musicality intent that you're going for, yeah? So um, one of the things that uh, we had somebody saying here, Roger, you were saying that it's like catching a football. Um, that's, yes, you can say that, but I'm gonna give it more of a broad concept here. If I, threw, if I had my full, uh, imagine I was a janitor, Okay, and I got my janitor keys, not the one on the, the belt that like pulls off to the edge, but I've got the janitor keys. It's got a crap load of keys on it, right? I'm gonna throw these keys to you. How do you catch those keys? You don't just slap at it like this because you know all those keys could, could stab you in the hand. So if somebody tosses you their keys, what do you do? You freak out first of all, and you go, I don't want my hands to bleed, and then you go, I'll slow that action down, and you're and it's so subconscious. Or you'll run out of the way to keep this one or two. Um, but if you know how to catch something, it's the same way if I threw you an egg. How would you catch the egg? You don't want to crack the shell, so you have to slow that egg down over that speed that it was already at, and then, then dissipate that over a short period of time. Yeah? So, Roger, as you were saying, yeah, kind of like a football, but if you've never caught a football or you've never played football, that's a hard one to correlate to. So, giving it the keys or the egg concept uh, really helps correlate yeah, that. The only time I've played football is just so I can go flip with the boys. Like when I was in school, so and, and no, didn't really care about catching it, right? So you like football players? Yeah. Uh, That's why I decided to steal you ah, at 50 years old. I played football for a little bit. I, so I remember so I was so telling, telling, telling his dad, "Hey, Kyle's got to quit football because I wanted to be a dancer." And oh, no, I think and I think the, the the last straw for um, me and Sarah was when they put my helmet on. And they went back and they took scissors and just cut my mullet <laughs> out from underneath yeah, the, the helmet. So that was my other uh, was uh, <laughs> straw. Um, so okay. back to what we're developing in here, trying to get the trying to get the developmental pieces within projection. So let's say I want to show my follower uh, that we're going to do an inside roll, right, guys? So one, two, three, four. I'm not just going to raise this hand, which I see very new dancers do. They're like, oh, that's that inside roll pattern. We have to use that concept now of developing it up inside the solar plex a little bit and then projecting it out the arm so we can ask for the hand the way that we want. So we've got the right hand over here. Or we go, let's go with the sugar push first. One and a two. Three and a four, it starts to back away, and we start to develop this from the core up and inside, projecting inside turn for Sarah, two, three, four, five, and six, allowing that transition to have arcs to it so you can see it happening. Yes? So many arcs today. <laughs> You're an arc. I love you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this little tune-up Wednesday with Kyle and I. This is a... Uh, the one hour a week we feel normal, alive, so grateful. Hey guys, Just I know. Connect with you guys. I know they're getting ready to start uh, quarantine releasing and stuff like this now. So just be careful when you're out with everybody. Be safe. Let's take care of our community. And something to remember: stay on this website if you're on kylesair.com. If you're not, go to kylesair.com and sign up for our awesome membership program. Come take a tour May 30th, that's Saturday at two o'clock. You'll see the advertisement coming up. It's gonna be live. You're gonna be able to see what we've got going on. Um, the site that you see now, guys, is the temporary site. Um, and trust me, it works, it's amazing. Um, we've just gone out and gotten some different artwork because I'm not an artist. Um, and all the people around me are amazing engineers. So uh, We're I really had to outsource. to show you what we have coming. So May 30th, that's gonna be on Saturday debut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Don't forget to tune in tonight for Robert Royston. Remember, a lot of talented professionals right now really need your support, and we feel your support. Those of you showing up, 
Thank you so, so very, very much. Um, we can't wait to be with you face to face again. So if you are liking these uh, these West Coast Wednesdays that we're going to be doing, we're going to be moving these to an evening time. They are um, going to be recorded. Because we were under the understanding that maybe it was yeah, going to be... During COVID, we wanted to fill those days, but Plus now like seven in, other toes. in the next couple months, we're, uh, everybody's phasing out. Also, this back wall... We're going to need some help. I can't tell you how many hours Han and I have sat here. Now, we have a lot of lighting coming, and we do, we do have a plan. It is not done being painted yet. Just stay tuned. Show up on Saturday to see what it looks like. Um, we will be doing uh, these West Coast Wednesdays uh, for the year. Um, this is our new way of uh, reaching out. Uh, this will be our local base. Uh, if you do want to be a part of this, uh, in the KyleCenter.com website, if you go to the member re registration, uh, we've got two options for you in there. We've got our basic uh, form. Uh, it will just allow you to get to these things, plus some access to our site in certain ways. And then we've got our elite access, which will also offer you so much more within the process. Something that's really cool that we're adding is at conventions and workshop weekends, there is going to be an hour coaching session uh, with Kyle and I every weekend. Only with elite members. Only elite members, uh, or members, not just elite members, it's all members. And also access to our private lesson schedule. On a typical massive weekend, we have anywhere from 50 to 100 requests for private lessons that will go to priority to our online members. So a lot also, of other businesses, go check it out. Huge discounts for you guys in it. those. Um, if you go look through on the registration page, uh, it will break down exactly what you get within your membership. Uh, you get video critiques, you get a lot of stuff. So please go read through that. Um, if you are a private lesson taker, you're talking the difference between $150 for a 45 minute lesson to dropping it by 20% to $120 for just by being a member with our, with our site. Go check it out, guys. We love you long time. We'll Watch us contribute tonight, everybody. We'll be there. See you next Wednesday. Bye. Please.